Hi, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about the stomach and pH. So when we talk about stomach pH, this might be a good idea for us to actually look at a stomach, right? So we're going to use our mannequin here uh, to help us do that. <coughs> and last, just take a breath, right? All right, Kalima, Kalima. We get her out like that, and now we get to our stomach. Okay, so. Take a look at our stomach here. Uh, we have the cardiac sphincter, right? That's the very top there. It's just a ring of muscles that will open and close and allow food to enter into the stomach. Now, when this is not working properly and acid is allowed back up and out, and that's when you get your heartburn. Then we have the fundus here, and then with the pylorus, and then we also have the pyloric sphincter as well. And again, another set of ring of muscles there that will then allow the food to then leave the stomach and go into the small intestines. Now, inside of the stomach, we see that we have these folds. We call that rugae. Now, the rugae uh, can stretch out. These folds can stretch out as the stomach fills with food. And the lining of the stomach, you can see more so in the picture on the slideshow than in here, is that it's got that glistening because there's mucus on there. Now, the mucus is produced to protect the rugae from the high uh, acidic levels uh, environment inside of the stomach. And when that mucus isn't being produced like it should, and it's not completely covering the rugae, then the, the stomach can actually start eating itself, destroying its own cells. And then you then have uh, ulcers that form, and you get bacterial infections, and it hurts quite a bit. Now, going deeper, <clears throat> looking at the internal anatomy, we have these chief cells. Now, the chief cells are located here. And so this would be up top uh, where the rugae are, all right? So we're looking, this is like the inside surface lining of the stomach. So the chief cells are gonna produce an enzyme. It's called pepsinogen, all right? Now it's an active enzyme, so it's not doing anything when it's first being produced and it's, and it's released. Um, now we look at the, the pep, right? We look at our prefix there and our root words and pep means protein. Right, remember that? So we know this enzyme is going to be dealing with protein. In fact, it's going to help break down protein. But it has to become active in order to do that. Well, the parietal cells will make hydrochloric acid. And the parietal cells are up here, right here. Now, the hydrochloric acid is, well, this is where that acidic environment comes from. Now, <clears throat> the hydrochloric acid will also deactivate that amylase that came from our glands in our mouth when we first started uh, digestion and the mastication of the food. So it goes down to the esophagus in the stomach and it reaches that high acidic environment and the amylase now can quits function. It becomes denatured. That enzyme becomes denatured. But the pepsinogen now becomes active due to this high acidic environment. If we take a look at the pH scale here, um, we are very low on the pH scale. All right? We have lots of acid but low number-wise on the pH scale. And so here's HCl here, here's our hydrochloric acid. Now gastric juice or gastric acid is actually what's inside of our stomach. And so you say, well, you said HCl is. Well, yeah, but gastric juice or gastric acid is a mixture of HCl and several other things as well. And so it's not as acidic as HCl, but it is still quite acidic as you can see there. It's around the two, two to three on the pH scale. So there's many more hydrogen ions being released than hydroxide ions in the uh, stomach there. And that's why we have that high um, acidity going on. So quickly, just a quick review on acids and bases. <clears throat> acids will release hydrogen ions into a solution. And bases will release hydroxide ions into a solution. Okay. Now, if we have a hydrogen and a hydroxide, and they come together, they actually, they can produce water, right? So you separate those into hydrogen and hydroxide as well. So that's just a quick general overview of determining pH. It's all about the number of hydrogen or hydroxide ions in a solution. So let's do a quick overview here of everything that's going on in the stomach. So let's go back to the stomach here. So the chief cells will release that pepsinogen, okay? The pepsinogen then will react with the hydrochloric acid which will then convert the pepsinogen to the active enzyme pepsin. Now, you might have heard of pepsin before. Now, since it has been activated, it has that name of pepsin, and pepsin then increases the rate of hydrolysis 
and proteins. Remember hydrolysis? So hydro, water, lysis, break apart. So we're using water to break apart the proteins, right? We're breaking apart from polypeptides down to dipeptides. We're going to continue that breakdown um, as well to the amino acids. So um, <clears throat> all that food, right, which was originally a, a, a bolus, right, when we first started chewing on it, start swallowing it, uh, has made it back into the stomach. And now the stomach uh, is now called chyme. Right, so now we have this liquidy mush in there, and it's called chyme. So we'll go from bolus to chyme. Now, when everything is ready to start moving out of the stomach, the stomach's starting to empty out. It only empties out a few milliliters at a time through that pyloric valve. That rate is determined by the acidity and the amount of fat present and hormone regulation. So there's a lot of things going on there. Because remember, only the organ is, I'm sorry, only the stomach is an organ made to withstand that high acidity, uh, that, 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 that very low pH. So it can only let a little bit out at a time. Because if it does too much, then the small intestines are going to start, uh, they're the same problem as you would with having ulcers in the stomach. They're going to start burning away the cells, the acid would. And then fat, right? So fat uh, is going to slow down the release as well. So when you have those high fat meals and you just feel just you want to pass out, feel very sluggish, all right? Uh, it's because you're going to stay fuller longer uh, having fat, all right, in, in your diet there. And then uh, just hormones as well. Hormones will help with regulation of uh, releasing that food too. Okay, so that's just a quick basic overview of what's going on in the stomach. Uh, next time we talk, we're going to talk about what happens after the stomach into the small intestines and the large intestines as well. All right, see you in class.